Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at this Siemens desktop PC. Now I've had this PC for a while, it's the Siemens PCD-5H, a desktop PC from Siemens with an Intel Pentium 75 MHz CPU. A good starting point for a retro PC. Now this video is sponsored by PCBWay, a full feature custom PCB prototyping service. If you need PCB prototypes, SMD stencils, PCB assembly, flexible PCBs or advanced PCBs, PCBWay has got you covered. They also offer CNC and 3D printing based on CAD files that you can upload in order to get a quotation. Also, check out their community section where you can find hundreds of do-it-yourself electronics projects from the community as well as their store where they sell lots of cool electronics projects. But now, back to the computer. I don't have the matching Siemens keyboard, unfortunately. I do have a Dell keyboard, which is a bit yellowed, and a Microsoft mouse. The keyboard of Dell is actually pretty nice. It has a nice clicky feel to it, and it matches this computer, uh, I think. So yeah, you know, cosmetically, it could do with a little bit of a cleaning. It's a pretty dull PC, as I already mentioned. There's no CD-ROM drive, there's no sound card. I do have the matching uh, Siemens uh, monitor. Unfortunately, I don't have the monitor stand, so I have this leftover stand that I've picked up that I'm using temporarily here now. I also have no idea if this computer will work, so only one way to find out. Let's start her up and see what she does. And we are greeted with the Phoenix BIOS splash screen CPU Pentium 75. The Phoenix BIOS is, you know, pretty standard stuff. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of options, so it is fairly trimmed down. Um, I think normal Phoenix BIOSes have a little bit more options here, so Siemens obviously customized this uh, to reduce the number of options that you have to play with, but I mean, that's fine. It has 32 megabytes of RAM and it is booting into a Dutch version of Windows 95. So yeah, so far so good. I love the rattling of the hard drive here in this uh, computer. Wonder if one of you guys can already guess what kind of hard drive we have in here based on the sound. And it goes into the Windows 95 desktop relatively quickly. We have get this network prompt. Obviously, I don't have the password, but Windows 95 definitely allows you to enter the desktop without knowing the password. We have Microsoft Office 4.3. And yeah, I mean, um, things are looking good. So yeah, let's take a quick look at the exterior. We have the Siemens Nixdarf logo. We have the PCD5H model. We have a power button, two LEDs, a disk drive, no CD-ROM drive. We have do have a key lock and we have this nice, you know, transparent window that we can slide on out here. But other than that, a pretty dull looking PC. On the back, power supply, power switch on the power supply. We have some room for expansion cards. We have one networking card installed, PS2 ports, two serial ports, one parallel port and one VGA port. Model number here is PCD5H slash 75 PCI. So this is a Pentium 75. Let's open her up to see what we have inside. And, you know, fairly traditional layout for this type of desktop PCs. It is a custom motherboard, so it's not your standard AT or ATX style motherboard. We have the disk drive here. We see a Western digital hard drive, obviously no optical drives. So yeah, pretty standard uh, stuff. Um, doesn't have a sound card, so we only have a networking card here, but I think once we add a sound card and an optical drive, add some speakers, that could turn into a nice little retro system. There's no active uh, CPU fan on the CPU itself. There is one CPU fan on the side, which we'll take a look at later on. So let's first start disassembling the thing. I'm going to start with this, which is still held on with one screw here. 
and this whole assembly just goes right off, which includes the disk drive and the hard drive. Obviously it would have been better if I disconnected those from the bat, but anyways, here we go, which gives us a clearer view of the motherboard. Just gonna take the 3Com Etherlink networking card out, which is a bit difficult now that I removed that bracket. I mean, the riser card here is sitting all wobbly. Etherlink 3, 3Com card, so yeah. See if we can get that riser card out. It's, it's held on pretty tight, has these big connectors here. So yeah, three ISA slots, one PCI slot, and then another PCI slot and ISA slot. So two PCI for ISA car, uh, slots. Standard power supply, so standard AT style plugs. Just put the black leads together. Yeah, we got these ID cables for the hard drive and the disk drive. So yeah, obviously this board has onboard IDE. We do have an additional power plug here, which is coming from the power supply. Not really sure what this is, perhaps some kind of uh, on off or remote on off switch. I don't know. Four sticks of RAM, CPU, which we'll take a look at in more detail. So yeah, just the heatsink glued on power fan to the side and then some kind of voltage regulator board uh, also included we've got some connectors here that we're going to be removing so we have the pc speaker we've got some uh, leds and the power switch So yeah, I'm gonna take the motherboard out because I wanna give the PC a little bit of a cleaning. It is very dusty and you get your hands all dirty as soon as you start working with it. So not really liking that too much. There's a lot of dust buildup here. So in order to get the motherboard out, we also need to remove these little uh, screws here, which hold on the IO plate. And once we've removed that, the motherboard just slides right on out. So that will allow us to look at the motherboard in a little bit more detail after we have cleaned it a bit because there is a lot of dust buildup here on the motherboard and also on the case. I mean, just look at this. Yeah, pretty gross. Also gonna be removing the power supply so that we have um, uh, a better way of cleaning the case. Held on by six screws, but fairly easy to remove. So yeah, let's take a look at this bracket here. We have the disk drive and the hard drive, the hard drive being a Western digital one. So we're just gonna be removing that as well, as I can imagine that there will be a lot of dust here as well. So yeah, lovely little Western digital caviar hard drive, 540 megabytes. And then we have your standard 1.44 megabyte disk drive, probably Mitsumi or Sony or something like that. Let's take a quick look. And yeah, Mitsumi can also do a little bit of a cleaning as you get your hands dirty very easily on a system like this. Now you can tell that this machine was put into good use by looking at the dust buildup on all of these components like the IDE cables, but also on this networking card here, which has this nice uh, thick layer of dust on it. So yeah, probably was used pretty heavily. Now, in terms of software, there's really not that much to see on this computer. If we look at the start menu, we basically only have Microsoft Office. Other than that, there is no software installed. Because there was also no optical drive, I can imagine that it wasn't that straightforward to get software onto this machine. In the device manager here, we can see that this one has a Tseng Labs ET4000 integrated video card, PCI. We have the 3Com networking card. And other than that, it's just very standard stuff. I mean, uh, there's no multimedia, nothing. I do find it really enjoyable to see these Office uh, 4.3 splash screens again. I mean, the iconic uh, Excel, uh, Word, Access, PowerPoint splash screens uh, are 
know, really nice to see again. I, I've used that a lot in the late 90s. So yeah, they look very, very familiar. And it's always nice to see these uh, things again. So yeah, here we have all of the components from the PC cleaned up nicely. So yeah, let's take a look at the case here, the front cover. There was, I thought it was a sticker at first, but it seems to be something that kind of melted on the plastic. Couldn't get that off. Otherwise it cleaned up pretty well. It is a bit yellowed, unfortunately. Case cleaned up nicely as well. Here we have the 3Com Etherlink 3 card. So yeah, this is a, uh, a nice performer here, very well supported across uh, uh, multiple operating systems. Yeah, definitely a nice card to have in a retro system. The Western Digital is also a nice hard drive from May of 1995. Yeah, probably period correct for a Pentium 75. Could go a little bit bigger, I think, but yeah, lo love the sound of these old Caviar hard drives and, you know, seems to be pretty pretty reliable so that's good the disk drive nothing special there also cleaned up the cover a little bit mitsumi 1.44 megabyte you know standard stuff riser card with the four isa slots and two pci slots a couple of capacitors here as well again nothing too special we also have a 145 watt power supply from Mine B Electronics. Never heard of that. Um, you know, pretty standard AT style uh, power supply with the standard AT style power plugs. There is one additional plug that went into the motherboard, which is this uh, three pin connector here. Kind of looks like a floppy drive connector. So yeah, not really sure what this is about. I think this is some kind of power on off switch. Kind of looks like a floppy connector like the P0, but the P1 was used on the motherboard on this soft off power switch connector. And here we have the Siemens motherboard. We have the AT style power connector with four caps here. Everything looking good. We have a remote on connector and that soft off power switch connector, which also uh, comes from the power supply. Now, as with a lot of vendors like Compaq, IBM, uh, Olivetti, this uses a non-standard motherboard with a lot of the connectors here on the left for mouse, keyboard, serial, parallel, and VGA. There are some dip switches on the motherboard. We have four of them. Now, I wasn't able to find any documentation of it so far. So I did find some similar Siemens motherboards that also had these four dip switches, and it was mostly used for uh, resetting the CMOS and uh, enabling or disabling the floppy disk controller. Luckily, we have a coin cell, so no Dallas battery uh, issues. We have onboard video, and this is a Tseng ET4000 uh, video card. I believe it has two megabytes of video RAM here. So yeah, the DAC chip of the video card is located here next to the dip switches. And yeah, as you can see, it's pretty much a Tseng ET4000 PCI card embedded on the motherboard here. It's definitely not the fastest PCI option you have for a platform like this, but I mean, this is a Pentium 75 megahertz. It's not a speed demon in and of itself. So, I mean, for, you know, typical MS-DOS gaming for this kind of platform, it's sufficient. We also have a VGA pass-through and an image port on the motherboard for this video card. On this module here, we seem to be having some kind of voltage regulation for the CPU. Because prior to this generation of Intel Pentium CPUs, everything was basically running at 5 volts. With the Socket 5, we introduced the 3.3 volt CPUs. But even within that Socket 5, there were Intel Pentium CPUs that ran on a slightly higher voltage, 3.4 up to 3.6. These are called VRE CPUs. For example, this Intel Pentium 100 CPU, the SX960, operates at a core voltage of 3.45 up to 3.6 volts, which is out of the range of the 3.3 volts. 
So that's probably the reason why Siemens externalized that voltage regulation on a separate board. The motherboard also has integrated IDE channels for the hard drive and a floppy disk controller. The three prominent Intel chips here on the motherboard make up the chipset, which is the 430NX Neptune chipset from Intel, second generation Pentium chipset supporting speeds up to 133 megahertz also supports the 50 megahertz bus speed that this pentium 75 is using so yeah it's um the third generation chipset from intel the 430 fx or the triton chipset released in 1995 a year after this one was the the most popular you know intel pentium chipset that was out there from intel so this is a generation before that released in 1994 we have four sticks of RAM, Edo RAM from Toshiba. So uh, the system has 32 megabytes, so that's eight megabyte each of these Toshiba chips. And here we have the CPU and the CPU cooler. So socket five system, we have the heatsink glued onto the CPU. We have a small fan besides the CPU to blow some air over the heatsink. Now this socket 5 has a very annoying uh, lever or, or lever, not really sure how to pronounce it, but you actually need a screwdriver to lift it up. And there we have it, the nice socket 5 Intel Pentium 75 megahertz. So yeah, you can see here that the heatsink is firmly glued on to the CPU. Now this is the ceramic CPU without the heat spreader. There's also a version of the Pentium 75 with the uh, gold plated heat spreader uh, on the die. And so yeah, after cleaning, after putting everything back together again, obviously we need to check to see if the system will still work. And luckily it did. So yeah, not really sure what I'm gonna do with this one. I think adding a sound card and a CD-ROM drive and just using it as, you know, a nice MS-DOS, early Windows 95 based retro gaming machine. I think it has a nice look and feel. I like the fact that it is a Siemens branded desktop PC. Now, unfortunately, in its current state, there's not a whole lot we can do with the computer. So there's no multimedia. We can use some uh, Microsoft Office tool, obviously, but you know that's not the goal of this retro machine. So yeah, please stay tuned for a follow-up video where I will probably add a CD-ROM drive, a sound card, and see how this beast performs in terms of MS-DOS and Windows 95 gaming. And in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.